go out to Union Grove State Park and see if we can find a waterfall and then go to Matchstick Marbles which is a museum of things made out of matchsticks. We will uh, see when we get there. Before we head out for the day, we make a quick stop at Walmart to get some stuff to put in the cooler for lunch. Winds exceeding 70 miles an hour, and the situation of a tornado, winds can be definitely stronger than that. Uh, or perhaps a coat closet, a bathroom, uh, an interior area. When we were on our way to Gladbrook, we got a call from Megan telling us she was in a tornado warning. There were a lot of trees down in the area and at her apartment complex. They also lost power for a little over 24 hours, but luckily she and Josh were okay. Well, we haven't found the uh, waterfall yet, but we stopped at a little picnic area to eat lunch um, here by the lake. On the way, Siri tried to save us about two minutes by taking us down a bunch of gravel roads. After driving all the way around the lake, we did finally find the waterfall. Luckily, it was a very small lake in less than a 10 minute drive. When we left home this morning, we were in search of a waterfall. Given that I was so flat, that was an easy task, but we found one here at the Union Grove State Park Spillway. Matchstick Marvels is home to a collection of matchstick models made by master craftsman Pat Atkin. He started making the matchstick models in 1977. He used to buy matchsticks off the shelf at the grocery store and cut the tips off. Now he buys them without the tips in bulk. Apparently, matchsticks are getting harder to find. They said he reached an agreement with Diamond Match to buy his final order of 5 million matchsticks. He said once these are gone, he's officially retired. Over his career, he has glued together around 7 million matchsticks. It's hard to believe the detail on these models and even harder to believe they were made by gluing matchsticks together. Many of his models are featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not museums across the country. One of those is a replica of the Millennium Falcon. It took 910,000 matchsticks to complete. Although we didn't get to see it, we did get this postcard for our Star Wars collection. This model of the USS Iowa battleship took 800 hours and nearly 137,000 matchsticks to complete. The shuttle was built the year after the tragedy of the Challenger explosion. Although he is retired now, he built this model of the US Capitol while still working full time. The model of Notre Dame took just under 300,000 matchsticks. They said after the fire earlier this year, Ripley's constantly called him trying to get him to sell. He told them he would not sell and he was keeping this one. Although matchstick marbles is not very big, if you want to see some incredible models, I would highly recommend the stop here. It is well worth the $5 admission price. We were driving by and saw the Veterans Memorial Park, so we decided to stop. A local Iowa artist is on a mission to bring a Freedom Rock to all of Iowa's 99 counties. He painted the original Freedom Rock to honor veterans in Greene County 15 years ago. He's guessing it'll probably take five to seven years to get the rocks every county painted. This is the one he did for Tama County, located in Gladbrook Memorial Park.
The next stop was the Salt and Pepper Shaker Gallery about 15 minutes away in Trayer. It is the Midwest's largest collection of salt and pepper shakers with over 16,000 sets. Unfortunately, it was closed today for some reason, so we'll just have to come back some other time. And what would one of our adventures be without bad weather? It rained so hard on the way home we could hardly see. This is where we're going to end this video. Come back next time as we continue doing it across America.